Hi students, my name is Niyati Said and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. My topic for the presentation is Invertebrate Coordinates. Turn your frustration into fun with your online tutor Niyati Said. So let's proceed towards our topic that is Invertebrate Coordinates. So, invertebrate chordates, there are the two subphylums under this, cephalochordata and urochordata. So, phylum chordata contain two clades of invertebrates. One is urochordata, commonly known as tunicates, and cephalochordata, that is commonly known as lancelets. Okay. Subphylum cephalochordata. It is composed of two dozen blade-shaped animals. See, as you can see that uh, it is blade-shaped animals known as lancelates. It retains all characteristics throughout their life. So, what are the characteristics of chordates that we have already studied in the previous section? There were four hallmarks. Notochord, dorsal nerve cord, post anal tail. Okay. So, it retains all those characteristics throughout their life. Subphylum cephalochordata, they are exclusively marine animals that are uh, capable of swimming, but usually they are buried in the sand with only their interior end being exposed. As it is shown that their uh, anterior end is uh, exposed, whereas the posterior end is deep, deep inside in the sand okay all chordate characteristics are present throughout their life history they are filter feeders inside of the oral hood is lined with cilia that is known as wheel organ these cilia plus cilia in the pharynx they help to generate a water current water and suspended part food particles they pass through the oral hood Okay, which are equipped with projections called cirri that strain larger particles. They feed by secreting a mucus net across the gill slits to filter out food particles that are present in the water. Lancelets, they possess all hallmarks of chordate, as I have told you, such as notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits, and post anal tail in the adult stages. The notochord extends into the head, which gives the sub subphylum its name cephalochordata. Cephalo means head, and chordata means the one which has notochord. The living form, the lancelets, are named for their blade like shape. Okay? Lancelates are only a few centimeters long and are usually found buried in the sand at the bottom of the warm, temperate and tropical seas with their uh, anterior end being exposed and their posterior end is uh, buried deep inside the sand. Okay? Like tunicates, tunicates is the other subphylum of the invertebrate chordate phylum. Okay? Uh, tunicates are also known as urochordata. Okay, so like tunicates, they are also suspension feeders. This is the representation of uh, cephalochordata. As we know that it retains all the characteristics of chordata such as notochord. This is the notochord. This is the dorsal nerve cord. This is the myotome or you can say the block of muscles. Okay, uh, they have pharyngeal gill slits and they have past anal tail. Okay. Now come to the subphylum urochordata. Urochordata, they are also known as tunicates or sea squirts, okay? Or they are also known as ascidians, okay? They are more commonly known as sea squirts, by the way. They belong to the same phylum as the vertebrates, although adults do not have a backbone. During development, the free swimming larvae they possess a tail dorsal nerve cord, a dorsal stiffening structure called the notochord, and the gill slits in the throat or the pharynx region. Okay? Tunicates are among the most common marine invertebrate with around 3000 species. Most tunicates live attached to a hard surface on the ocean floor and are commonly known as sea squirts and sea poke also. They are found at all depths of the ocean. Other tunicates such as salps and pyrosomes, they live in the palisic uh, as adults and free swimming and are drifters. Okay. The name 
tunicates come from a tunic surrounding their body. Okay. The name sea squids come from the way water is pushed out through the excellent siphon. Okay. And if we say about that development, then adult forms are much more modified in uh, and, and do not have a notochord. A dorsal hollow nerve cord or a post anal tail, which are the hallmarks of a cordata, although they do not have pharyngeal gill slits. Okay. Larvae possess all the ca chordate characteristics, while the adults they exhibit only pharyngeal pouches. The larva form possesses all the four structures that we will be uh, studying just after this slide. Most tunicates are hermaphrodites, that means sexes are not separate. Okay, tunicate larvae they hatch from eggs inside the adult tunicate's body, and after hatching, a tunicate larva swims for a few days until it finds a suitable substratum on which it can attach, and it happens, and all this happens in the dark location. It then attaches by the head to the substratum and undergoes metamorphosis into the adult form. At this point of time, the notochord, nerve cord and the tail disappears. Okay. This is the representation of um, tunicates. The, as we know that the name tunicates comes from the tunic surrounding that body. This is the tunic. Okay. And this is the tunic that surrounds the body. That's why its name is tunicates. Okay. The inhalant siphon, this is the inhalant siphon and this is the excellent siphon. So first we will talk about the inhalant siphon. The inhalant siphon is used to take in the food and water and the excellent siphon they expels water and the waste. Okay. The tunic that surrounds the body is very thick. They are usually opaque that covers protecting their barrel shaped body from their predators. It is made from a material very similar to the cellulose. On the inner surface of the tunic is a thin epidermis. It is this which secretes the tunic. Just behind tunic, this is tunic. And just behind tunic, there is an epidermis that secretes the tunic, uh, tunic that composes the tunic uh, layer, outside layer or the covering protecting layer. Okay. On inside of the epidermis is a thick dermis or a body wall and the band of muscles which can squeeze the tunic forcing a jet of water from the excellent siphon. Okay. This is the dermis. This is the dermis that helps in the squeezing the tunic forcing a jet of water from the excellent siphon. Okay. And most of the species within the tunicate body is taken up by the atrium. This is the atrium. Okay. It is a large cavity. This contains an enlarged uh, pharynx which has large number of uh, small pores or slits in its walls through which water can pass. It is connected to the digestive system at one end and to the inhalant siphon at the one end. As you can see that it's one end, it's atrium, one end is connected with the inhalant siphon and this uh, end is connected with the digestive system. Okay. Now, if we talk about their uh, pharynx, then the tunicate pharynx is covered with by tiny hairs. This is the pharynx and it is covered by the tiny hairs or ciliate cells okay to allow the consumed food to pass down through the esophagus the digestive system is u-shaped and the anus emptying directly to the outside tunicates are filter feeders they feed by drawing often hundreds of liters of water each day through the inhalant siphon this water passes, passes through the pharynx where small particles are filtered out before the water is expelled through the excellent siphon. The water current is caused by beating of the cilia. Water can also be pushed out of the atrial cavity as you can see that this is the atrial cavity. By muscular constrictions of the tunic if the tunicate is threatened. Okay. 
the small particles of plankton etc are trapped onto a continually moving layer of mucus this mucus is released by special cells and is moved across the surface of the pharynx by the beating of many small cilia until it passes into the digestive system where food particles and mucus are di digested okay most tunicates are hermaphrodite and they avoid self fertilization by either having the eggs or sperm reject each other or by having the eggs and sperm mature at different times sperms are released into the sea but the eggs are retained within the body where they are fertilized by sperm brought in with incoming water the eggs are brooded within the body until they hatch the larvae looks like tadpole and are far more obviously members of the phylum chordata than the adults tunicate larva they do not feed but search for suitable location on the sea floor and then settle in a head down position this is the metamorphosis and this uh, larvae looks like a tadpole and are uh, far more obviously members of the phylum chordata than the adults Tunicate larvae they do not feed but search for suitable location on the sea floor as I've just told you that they find a suitable uh, substratum on which they can attach and then settle in a head down position see the, its head is uh, attached with the substratum and tail is moving upward they attach themselves to the sea flourishing uh, special adhesive glands in front of their head okay once settled they undergo metamorphosis during which they lose their tail and their ability to swim okay the remainder of the body twist through 180 degree in order to become a small tunicate as you can see that they tear of the body got twisted through the 180 degree uh, in order to become a small tunicate most tunicates live about one year as adult this is the adult they are eaten by sharks skates and other bottom dwelling animals okay many have poisonous flesh to deter predators okay now if we see about their medicinal benefits then sea squids or the tunicates they have shown promise as source of and chemicals which may be used to treat cancers and other medical conditions okay now if we see the difference between cephalochordata and neurochordata then cephalo means head and chord means cord neurochordata where euro refers to tail okay animal belonging to cephalochordata they show notochord extended in the head region to hence name they show notochord throughout their life animal belonging to eurochordata they show notochord only in the posterior part of the body that is the tail region okay that's why its name is eurochordata in eurochordata notochord is seen only in the larval stage and is lost in adult stages okay body is segmented body is unsegmented on the contrary to this body is fish like the, or they are freely swimming animals and on the contrary to this eurocordata are free swimming only in the larval stages whereas adult is sessile and fixed to certain substratum okay examples are amphiosis or lancelates and example of eurocordata is herbmania okay so this comes to an end in the next section we'll be studying about the subphylum vertebrates so till then stay tuned thank you